United, and what are you, what are you finding as you publicly make your statements? Well, nurses at the bedside um, every day see the uh, the impact of the economic crisis, right? Um, see patients come in with stress-related um, illnesses. Um, we watch the suicide rate uh, climb. Uh, we have parents who can't be at the bedside of their sick children because they're going to lose their health insurance if they don't go to work. So they walk out of that out of that hospital room and leave their child alone in order to protect the finances of the family. Um, we we see the impact of the, the for, foreclosure crisis. Um, we see uh, seniors who can't retire in dignity or who are cutting their pills in half or are, are skipping uh, days of medication. We discharge patients um, and fear that they're not going to be able to fill their pain medication prescription uh, when they go home. And so we've been, uh, patient advocates are just an essential part of our profession, um, but we also believe that you can't stop um, at the walls of the hospital, um, but that patients uh, are, are members of families and communities and are in order to actually really truly advocate for patients, you have to advocate for, for, for the communities that they live in. And so that's what we're all about and why we're politically active. Wow. Well said. Really well what said. What inspired you to become a nurse? Um, I had a I had a family member who was in, involved in a uh, in an accident that paralyzed her and uh, and was horrified to watch her struggle uh, because she had no insurance. And, and uh, the implications of, of when you're sick, having to worry about finances first and foremost, um, was really brought it home to me, and, and that's one of the things that inspired me to to get involved as a nurse um, and to be a single payer activist as well. Yeah, that's I, it's stunning the the list of society's ills that you have just run down that you see the results of firsthand. Mm -hmm. um, it's it's actually it's. It's uh, made me speechless, actually, <laughs> which is hard to do. I, uh, you know, I've had a couple of operations in my life, and in uh, recent years, I had a couple more. Uh, this like, is Michael making it personal. Well, I speak from my own experience, and one of those experiences is uh, being in a hospital here in Chicago, and I know a guy who's been trying to put together a union, uh, their organized union. I'm not sure if it's the same. Uh, but uh, when I talked to nurses there who basically told me that uh, things are, I mean, they're a little bit critical of the administration, but people are afraid to try to organize. Uh, they feel there are ramifications if they take a stand and try to uh, bring their fellow workers together to, to be organized. Can you speak to that and uh, tell us about your organization uh, working to, bring, to develop your organizational uh, base? Is that... Um, throughout the whole country. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, yeah. Talk to us a little bit about that. Sure. Um, we represent about 4,000 nurses or so in Chicago, and I'm, one of the things we're very proud of is, is that Jackson Park Hospital, which is a hospital on the, on the south side, um, recently joined our ranks in January and voted 85%, uh, despite the fear and intimidation and, and union busting uh, by the employer, voted by 85% to, to join our ranks uh, and uh, organize, um, which is a huge accomplishment, and they're now uh, collectively fighting for their for a first contract, um, but it's absolutely true. When you work in a healthcare industry that is driven by the bottom line, that is driven by profit rather than uh, what patients need, um, you face oftentimes uh, administration an administration that um, does everything in their power to prevent you from from being the patient advocate uh, and nurse that you were trained to be. Um, and nurses cry on the way home. Uh, nurses dread going to work because they know they're going to be put in a position where it's difficult to provide the, the quality health care that they want to provide. Um, and so for nurses to, to get together despite that fear uh, and organize a union uh, and, and take that leap um, is a huge accomplishment. And um, there is no hospital in Chicago uh, that does not need a strong nurses union um, to, to back up nurses, to, to allow nurses to, to do that advocacy. And so we, we're hoping to, to come to, uh, to the hospital near you <laughs> um, uh, because that's really what's necessary. Every, every nurse, not just in Chicago and Illinois, but in the country needs to be represented by a union. Are doctors supportive or are, do doctors tend to, I mean, I, I always ask people, I try to find out if they're Republicans, Democrats, if they're to the left or the right. I, I can't help myself. And, um, you know, I find surprise. plenty of social liberals, but economic conservative doctors. And I'm just wondering, um, 
Uh, what your sense is of doctors in general? Do they tend to support the people they depend on and work closely with? Are they, uh, do they, any stories from that realm? I think that doctors often operate as individuals um, as opposed to uh, to moving as a collective. Um, and that means that, that uh, doctors uh, approach uh, the work that we do from all different directions politically. Um, what I will say is there's a, there's a, a huge swing within physicians towards uh, towards national health care, towards single payer, um, without, without any question, right? That's good. Um, and so there's been a real shift there. And uh, I think that physicians need, need to be con uh, congratulated, um, physicians for a national health um, Program for policy, P P yeah. Uh, PNHP has been doing incredible work in in uh, in publicizing um, the the shifting opinion in, in physicians and the importance of single payer. Uh, how how long has National Nurses United been around, and where was the first shop, so to speak, or hospital that was organized? Um, we're actually a, a new as a formal organization. Um, we've been in existence for about two years or so now, uh, which is hard to believe with as much as has happened in two was years. Was there so no much. nurses or a union before um, that? We're the, we're the result of a merger of right. a number of separate organizations, and uh, we're able to, to build bridges and actually come together as one nationally in order to, to build a national nurses movement, um, which we're very excited about and is, has... Uh, resulted in uh, in um, an exponential growth, I think, in our visibility and our power and the, the ability of nurses to have a voice nationally. Well, again, I've, I've been down to Occupy back last fall and uh, at a couple of moments when there, the call went out for more people to join the activities and the nurses' contingent was always present. And, um, I, you know, there's... There's, it's one thing for you know the Wall Street guys to walk by and scream "Get a job!" to uh, <laughs> the uh, what they call the you know as unwashed masses, as opposed to looking at a bunch of men and women who are nursing, uh, and they sort of the words stick in their mouth because they know darn well you're working ridiculously hard at the most maybe essential serving kind of work we can imagine. Uh, so it's somebody in your organization or many somebodies said okay to coming out onto the streets and joining with others and I'm wondering if you know the impetus for that because it sure would be nice if other groups uh, followed suit. Other unions. And other unions. Well, other unions do. Mm -hmm. There are other unions. Sure. Well, we're a, we're a nurse-run union, and, and it was organic and automatic for us, I think. Um, our, our board of directors and our leaders um, across the country um, didn't, didn't ask the question, should we do something, but asked the question, what can we do? What can we bring to this movement um, to support it concretely? And uh, one of the first things that we did was to set up first aid tents, um, starting um, in Zuccotti Park and, and Occupy Wall Street, but then in in a number of other cities as well, um, attempted to do that in Chicago, uh, and to be a part of the, of the fight to, to to get a permanent encampment here. Um, but it's um, it's not even a question, right? It's it's we've been waiting for um, for a movement like Occupy to, to happen, and so we're going to do everything in our power to support it. So tell us about May 18th. That's next Friday. Right. Friday. Um, fr Friday after next. One. Um, yeah. One, yeah two weeks from yesterday, sorry. We had a convention scheduled for Washington, D.C., where nurses were going to come together from across the country, and we ch we uh, quickly uh, changed our minds and moved the entire convention to Chicago. So we have a thousand nurses uh, or more who will be in um, from uh, across the country, as well as international nurses groups that, that are coming. Um, and we want we specifically moved to Chicago to be able to, to, to be where the world is watching, which is where um, G8 and NATO, uh, where the, the summits were to happen happen concurrently. Um, in response to the protests, uh, obviously the G8 got moved to Camp David, uh, but we will still be um, holding their feet to the fire and holding an event on May 18th. Uh, we're marching uh, at 11 a.m. from the Sheridan um, to Daly Plaza uh, for a permitted rally um, that kicks off at 12.15. Tom Morello from uh, Rage Against the Machine, and he's touring with Spring Sting right now as well, will be performing at that. Great. And we expect to have um, Th thousands. More um, the better. <laughs> and, and our message there is really to, to say, look, um, we didn't cause the economic crisis. 
Right? Wall Street caused the economic crisis. There's not a lack of money in this country. We are the richest country in the world at its richest point. Um, it, it's not an issue of not enough money. It's an issue of the money being in the wrong pockets. It's an issue of the 1% siphoning money off of the rest of us. Um, and it, we're not willing to talk about cuts and concessions. Um, what we need to be talking about is actually raising the revenue and actually having Wall Street pay back uh, the communities uh, that it's been robbing, right, in order to provide a, 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 a decent quality of living for, for everyone in the, in the United States. And so we'll be, um, in particular, uh, critical of the G8 and, and talking about the financial transaction tax or Robin Hood tax um, yeah. as a, as a solution, which is a, just a tiny tax. Yeah, tell people about that because I love the Robin Hood tax yeah. concept. Yeah. <laughs> It's excellent. It's it's well, all taxes should be Robin Hood taxes. And the Occupy movement is what's made the discussion about income distribution even even possible to talk about. It's opened up the space for that. It, right. It's a 0.5 percent, so tiny tax, on Wall Street transactions um, that happens at like a sales tax at the point where the trade is made. It's, it's a lot smaller than Chicago's sales tax too. Exactly. That's that's 50 cents on every hundred dollars that uh, in trades. Um, so it's it's a tiny amount of money but it could raise $350 billion each year, which is, by the way, three times more than every state deficit put together that currently exists and is greater than a th uh, greater than 30% of the total national deficit. Um, so rather than uh, scramble and fight over the crumbs and who's gonna, who, which programs survive and which programs get cut, we, we can raise the money necessary to make sure that everyone is taken care of. And it's, it's outrageous that Wall Street currently doesn't pay any sales taxes on its trades. Um, and so that needs to stop. It's, it's a concrete solution, something that is building momentum internationally and needs to happen in the U.S. Jan Rodolfo, maybe you should be an economist. <laughs> You're good. These are good you things are, to know about. Every nurse is an economist. <laughs> They have to live on their wages. Is, uh, is the nursing as an institution, as an occupational uh, uh, area, are, are people coming to that? Is it hard to get nurses? Or, you know, we hear about shortages of doctors, sometimes shortages of nurses. Uh, what's going on in terms of people, uh, young people, uh, choosing that as a profession? Sure. Um, nursing is a calling, and there there is a serious nursing shortage. There's been an effort to to encourage uh, more uh, folks who want to go into nursing to, to get an education, but um, but the healthcare industry is using the economic crisis as an excuse right now to slash and burn and cut services and to move out of communities that most need their services and move because to richer communities. Sense. And so we're finding that new graduate nurses are unable to find work. Um, and incredible. That's a travesty. Uh, it's criminal. Uh, it's short-sighted. And um, <laughs> with as many people in this country as need health care, and as many new graduates as there are who want to provide health care, it's a crime that they're not, uh, they're not at the bedside where they belong providing that care. My God. And really, again, I'm speechless. And connecting to our, our previous guests, where uh, Peg mentioned the medicalization of uh, motherhood, mm -hmm. of giving birth, which only makes it dangerous when it's not dangerous, makes it um, expensive when it shouldn't be, all that sort of thing. We just seem to be, you know, out of whack. bass ackwards, <laughs> if you excuse me, yeah. uh, when it comes to, you know, leading our lives in a healthy fashion. And nursing fits right in, uh, as you just said. Mm -hmm. you, are you going to be on the mic uh, down there at Daily Plaza? Uh, I'll certainly be on the bullhorn, if not on the mic. Because you're <laughs> really good, Pat. You really Were you uh, it out an there. activist sort growing up? Or did you come to it at a certain time in your life? Um, I, I grew up in Chicago and yeah, I, I became active in um, it, Little Italy Greek Town. Uh huh. Yeah. And uh, I think I was born an activist. I've been born a troublemaker anyway. That's um, good. But I have found the right, uh, the right union and the right organization to be connected to um, because I think. Uh, that nurses are, are uniquely positioned, uh, are listened to, are the most trusted year after year in the, in the Gallup polls. Um, when nurses speak, people listen, and we're in every community in this country. We're providing essential services, and um, thankfully we have a union that, that we've built uh, that is, I think, tanking the country by storm and pushing no, for... Great. Pat Drazen, for Nas change. National Nurses United. We are so glad Jan you came Rodolfo. up here to... 
What did I just say? You, you're that. mixing our guests oh, up. So I'll We're talking to Jan Rodolfo. <laughs> <laughs> you you talked about a breastfeeding oh, God. cafe. Lady. I answered a Pat. It's okay. Oh, <laughs> hi out there, Pat. Nice to see you. Tell us how yeah. people can find out more. If they just give us the website. I was there this morning. It's full of information. Uh, www.nationalnursesunited.org. Thanks so much website. for coming on the show. Jan Rodolfo, registered nurse from National Nurses United. I have us have a big round of applause for both Jan and everyone who was on the show today. This is Michael James along with Katie Hogan thanking you for turning in, tuning in to another edition of the Live from the Heartland show. And we want to thank everyone who made this show possible and we want to encourage you to do... Good in the world because the, the world needs all the good that you can do. Okay. All power to the people over oh, and out. Thanks a lot, Eli, down there. <laughs> You're listening to 88.7 WLUW, Chicago Sound Alliance, broadcasting from the campus of Loyola University.